Welcome. Today we're tackling a true diagnostic nightmare in emergency medicine, acute aortic dissection. It's rare, yes, but incredibly lethal, and it often hides behind symptoms you wouldn't expect. We're going to walk through a fascinating clinical case, uh, one where really atypical symptoms completely mask this emergency. Absolutely. And it is tough. You know, acute aortic dissection, it's missed initially in, believe it or not, up to 38% of patients. And the stakes couldn't be higher. For up to 28%, the diagnosis only comes at autopsy. That's yeah. staggering. Think about this. 50% mortality within 48 hours if it's missed. And that goes up by 1% every single mm. hour. So getting the diagnosis right and right away is just fundamental. That ticking clock. That's exactly why this case is so important for us to understand. Okay, let's picture the scene. Emergency department. We have a 58-year-old man. He comes in complaining of sudden persistent left flank soreness. Been going on for about 30 minutes. He says the pain radiates to his groin, and he's also got this um, mild numbness in his left leg, but importantly, no weakness. Okay, and his background, he has chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, but interestingly, he denies any history of hypertension or diabetes, you know, the typical risk factors you might look for. Mm. What he does have in his history just a few months back is treatment for a left ureteral stone. He had that extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. Right. And here's the kicker, the statement that really sets the initial direction. The patient says, and I quote, this flank soreness feels exactly the same feeling as his kidney stone from before. Imagine hearing that. As a clinician, your mind immediately goes down that path, right? It's exactly. So on arrival, his vitals. Blood pressure was 129 over 44 millimeters of mercury. Pulse was 46 beats per minute. Pretty slow. Regular sinus bradycardia. Respiration 17, temp 36.7 Celsius, normal temp, and the physical exam. Significant left costoverbral knocking pain. That fits. We also check peripheral pulses, blood pressure in all limbs, no significant difference. That sometimes reassures people away from vascular causes. So, based on everything in the history, his strong feeling it was the stone again, the flank pain renal calculus was, well, it was the top suspect seem logical. Absolutely logical. So the team does what you'd expect. They start the workup for a kidney stone, but then things take a sharp turn Look because those initial tests, they come yeah. back normal. Your analysis, totally fine. The kidney, ureter, bladder, x-ray, nothing significant. Even the renal ultrasound shows no hydronephrosis, no sign of blockage. And that leaves that one sort of nagging detail, like the unusual neurological presentation. That left leg numbness, it just didn't quite fit with simple kidney colic, did it? That was the piece that didn't belong. That was the key. That atypical symptom, the numbness, it forced a rethink. It didn't line up with the kidney stone hypothesis. So the suspicion shifted. Could this be vascular? That led to the next step. A contrast enhanced thoracoabdominal aorta computed tomography scan, and boom, there was. Yeah. An extensive Stanford type A aortic dissection. A total game changer, as you said. Wow. Just, wow. To go from, it feels like my kidney stone to that. So the scan confirmed it. How extensive was this dissection anatomically? Was it as bad as those subtle signs suggested? Oh, it was incredibly widespread. The dissection involved the entire aorta, from the aortic root ascending, descending abdominal, all the way down to both common iliac arteries. The scan showed a clear intimal flap, you know, the double lumens running that whole length. And there were other worrying things too, the opening to the superior mesenteric artery. That was in the false lumen. Big risk for gut ischemia. Plus, a thrombus, a clot nearly three and a half centimeters long, sitting in the left common iliac artery. And critically, confirming his flank pain source, the dissection went into the left renal artery. It caused a regional cortical infarction, basically, killed off a part of the lower left kidney, a multi-system catastrophe. That is just a devastating picture. So much damage from one event. Given how serious a Stanford type A is, what was the outcome for him? Did they manage to intervene in time? Well, this is the good news part of the story. Because they picked up on that atypical symptom and ordered the scan, they caught it, he went straight to surgery with the cardiovascular team. Mm. And thankfully, remarkably, he had an uneventful post-operative course. It was a real save. And it hinged on someone being willing to look past the obvious diagnosis. It really highlights the need for humility and just constant vigilance in diagnostics, doesn't it? We know acute aortic dissection is this rare but deadly emergency, and it's so tough when it doesn't present classically. We learn about the severe tearing chest pain, the textbook case, but we have to remember that only happens in maybe, what, 72, 73 percent of patients. Sounds right. Which means a fair chunk, maybe 5 to 15 percent in Western populations, present with atypical pain, like this man. And that's where we can get caught out. Exactly. 
And cognitive biases play a huge role here. Things like anchoring bias you hear, same feeling as my kidney stone, everything else gets filtered through that initial thought. So that left flank pain that felt like colic, it was actually ischemic pain from the kidney infarction. The dissection cut off blood flow via the left renal artery. Ischemic kidney pain, sometimes called vascular angina, can feel very similar to renal colic. The nerve pathways overlap. Okay, that makes sense for the flank pain. But the bradycardia, the slow heart rate, that seems counterintuitive for someone in severe pain. It does, but there's a physiological reason. That intense visceral pain from the ischemic kidney can really crank up the vagal tone. That increased parasympathetic activity slowed his heart rate right down. It's a response to severe visceral insult, not typical for a stone, but possible as ischemia. And then the left leg numbness that ties directly back to the dissection too. That mural thrombosis we saw on the left common iliac artery. It blocked blood flow. Simple occlusion caused by the dissection's damage downstream. So it's this cascade, isn't it? The dissection itself triggers multiple complications, each presenting with its own potentially misleading symptom. It wasn't just one thing. It was hitting multiple systems. Precisely. You're looking at malperfusion syndrome. This happens in about 25 to 30 percent of acute aortic dissections. Basically, vital organs aren't getting enough blood, and that severely impacts the chances of a good outcome, even if surgery happens quickly. Neurologic problems, like his numbness, show up in 18 to 30 percent of cases. And while isolated leg ischemia, like he had, is relatively uncommon, maybe around 10 percent, this case drives home that it is a known presentation. You have to consider dissection even without chest pain. It also shows why we need to fight confirmation bias, you know, looking for evidence that fits our first idea and ignoring things that don't. So, for everyone listening, for you working in that high-stress ED environment, what's the takeaway? It's really about challenging our own expectations. We can't just wait for the classic textbook picture, these atypical presentations. They happen. They're common enough to be dangerous if we miss them. We have to push past the first impression, push past even what the patient strongly believes, like the same feeling idea. You've got to pull together all the complaints, even the vague ones, the numbness, the weird vital sign, and ask, does this really all fit together? Every detail is potentially vital. Absolutely. It means having a very high index of suspicion. If you see someone with isolated limb ischemia, numbness, pain, coolness, and there isn't an obvious cause like trauma or a known clot, even if they don't have that ripping chest pain, acute aortic dissection has to be high on your list. Don't dismiss it. And then, of course, it's about using the right tools correctly and quickly. Echocardiogram, computed tomography, these are essential but they only help if you suspect the condition enough to order them in the first place. Yeah. This case really drives home how connecting those subtle, maybe weird seeming symptoms to a potentially catastrophic underlying cause can literally save a life. It makes you think, doesn't it? In that busy, pressured environment, how do you consistently cultivate that, I don't know, that sixth sense maybe, that intuition to spot the vascular emergency hiding behind something common, especially when the initial tests might look okay? Well, I think part of it is just continuous learning, constantly reminding ourselves about the sheer variety of ways these critical conditions can present. That's key to improving outcomes. And it boils down to critical thinking, doesn't it? Questioning your assumptions, questioning the obvious, and always considering different possibilities for every single patient you see. Never assume. Keep learning. Keep looking.